three of our law enforcement roundtable coming up right now. This is the Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Hey folks, Chuck Holton. I'm at the airport and we're headed out to Reno to go and bury my mother and uh, go backpacking for a few days, take a few days off with the family. Uh, But I wanted to give you part three of my law enforcement roundtable that I did a few days ago with Congressman Clay Higgins, my good friend Tim Miller, former Secret Service agent and cop and Marine, and also former cop Diana Mueller. And we were just talking with them about the war on cops and how they feel about it, what their what their sense is of where this is going. And I want you to see the last of it. Now, if you haven't seen the first two parts, you should go watch those first. But check this out. Mm -hmm. And that's the scariest thing for me, I think, when it comes to personal security, is that, uh, yeah, I may have a constitutional right to to protect myself and my family. I certainly have a natural right to do so. But when it comes to the legal rights, because of the politics of the moment, Mm -hmm. I may very well if I have to protect my family, if I get them driving down the road and all of a sudden I'm surrounded by a mob of screaming, you know, latte drinkers and they start breaking the windows out of my car and trying to reach in and drag my family out. And so in order to protect my family, I floor it and I get out of there, but I run over somebody in the process. I'm getting, I, I'm going to jail. I, I, it doesn't even have to be that that crazy. All I have to do is state something like that online and I could literally lose my job. You All I have to do is go to jail. You will go let me interject. You wouldn't go to jail if I was the chief of police in that municipality. You right. might get a medal. You understand it's up to our, ele- our elected officials to embrace core principle truths and to and to protect the rights and freedoms of their law-abiding American citizens right. to stand against chaotic and violent attack. That's right. So if that exact scenario that you describe is precisely why we as a nation have to take a step back and say, wait a minute, man, this guy is protecting his family. He came under attack. His right to protect his family against a, an unprovoked and violent attack from a bunch of, 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 of gang guys on the street that are blocking the highway. He, he has that right. And he should be recognized as the American exercising his freedom and, and his responsibility to protect his family, not, not demonized and, and criminally charged for doing so. But this is up to the elected officials from sea to shine and sea. And it, this is where I fear that we need as a nation uh, a revival of spirit. And, and personally, I think that's that's coming. I think I think God has that in mind. Do you, would you say that there is uh, sentiment in the people that with the people that you with, with whom you work uh, to to address that in Congress? To yes, there is. Yes, sir. And I'd love to hear Miss Diane's comment on that. Yeah, me too. But yes, sir. Uh, there's an appetite amongst the most conservative of us to 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 write legislation and to have uh, con- to have congressional resolution to to support the type of spirit I've just described. I'd love to hear Miss Diane's opinion on that. Very good. Go ahead. Well, Go ahead, Diane. That is, it's kind of funny because I don't like to come to a conversation without a solution. I don't like to go to a protest and say, I'm, I'm upset about this without offering solutions. And that's kind of why I'm a little miffed with all the protests that are going on because I don't see any solutions. I, you know, I don't believe, I believe that kind of like Christianity and gun ownership and, you know, things that I want to bring to a positive light that me going up to you and cussing at you and spitting on you and throwing things at you and killing people of your kind, is not the way to do it. So, Uh, Back to the congressman's, yes. Uh, I, through my advocacy with the Second Amendment, have really pushed for basically getting firearms education back in schools. 
So that's what I'm working with my uh, senior senator uh, on uh, writing some legislation to, um, you know, basically the Second Amendment's my deal. So uh, that's what I'm focused on. But the, the bigger picture here, I think, is tell me if you guys agree with this. I feel like the protesters are um, the protesters slash vandals are children who are in the Target checkout demanding to have the candy bar. And mom and dad are too weak to say, no, you can't have that candy bar because they gave them 10 other candy bars in 10 other cities. And now we're creating this monster that even mom and dad that have created this monster, they can't control it anymore. So uh, you're right, Congressman. It's going to take strong leaders, strong men and women to, whip, you know, there's a mob mentality out there. And it's going to be ugly when you tell the child no, no more. Uh, you're, the, the adult is going to actually be in control uh, instead of letting the children control control the scenario. I think I'm off there. No, I think I, you're I, on. Uh, <laughs> decisive leadership to um, either maintain or restore law and order is is a cornerstone of our republic. And it, and it, uh, I, listen, I would give my last life's blood in defense of, of the civil rights of every American. <laughs> regardless of, of color or culture or creed, heritage or background, um, as that my oath as a, as a cop and as a congressman is to the Constitution. So uh, 1,000% support every American's right to peaceably assemble to redress grievance. However, we must have law and order. And right. carjackings and burnings and lootings and murders – that is not peaceable assembly to redress grievance. And this is where a strong, decisive leadership must, must stand up across the country. And, and who must demand that? We, we the people must demand from sea to shining sea that our elected officials and our law enforcement leaders, uh, stand to yes, protect the first amendment rights to redress grievance and peaceably assemble, regard whether or not we agree with the, the with the faction or not, we must protect that by all means. However, not outside the parameters of 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 the law, and certainly not to allow uh, violence and destruction. Man, I shut that down. How fast? Someone asked me how fast, Chuck, would I stop it? I told him I stop it at 3,250 feet per second. That's right. That's right. And, you know, that's the kind of leadership that it takes to break up the mob mentality. In a mob, people do things that they would never do otherwise. And all it takes is one person to stand in front of them and tell them stop. And and it breaks that that, you know, the, the Bible says that when people have denied God, that he gives them over to a depraved mind. And this is what you see in a mob mentality is an absolutely depraved mind. They are animals. They are acting like animals. Their lizard brain is in control. And for civility to return, we have to have leadership that has the, the courage to stand up and do something about this. And allowing them, uh, like this mayor in, in Seattle, uh, to, to actually encourage them She's not just encouraging the people in her own city. She's encouraging people in Los Angeles and San Diego and Las Vegas and all across this country to to basically create anarchy. And we are going to have to have some strong leadership to take control and put a stop to this. Now, last let, let's just wrap this thing up. Let's put a bow on this. When we're talking about uh, defunding the police, I've seen a lot of people on the left that have said, no, no, well, defunding the police doesn't really mean abolishing the police. But now there's a uh, there's an op ed in the New York Times today that that specifically says, yes, we mean abolish the police, get rid of them altogether. Uh, now, that would have been so patently ridiculous on its face five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that it, it would have it, it would have been a laugh line on on a late night show, but now it's actually gaining momentum. It's actually gaining speed. What does the world look like without, a, what is the United States without a police force? 
Diana? I think you see it in Seattle. And I think that the Congress is right, that it's going to take us, me, you, all of our uh, fellow citizens that uh, don't want to lose what we have in America. We're going to have to run for office. We're going to have to get outside of our comfort zone. We're going to have to, um, you know, register people to vote uh, and just engage. We have been so busy with living and let living that we've allowed uh, allowed the children to run the household. And I'd just like to encourage all of the adults to stand up and uh, with, you know, withstand the, the, the craziness that's gonna come from when you tell a child no. We do wanna be open-minded and, and uh, compassionate, but we also yes. wanna speak the truth, the truth in love. First uh, Corinthians, Corinthians 13 says that we should not rejoice in wrongdoing, but we should rejoice with the truth. And that's what we need to stand up for is the truth. I agree with you. What, what would you say, uh, Captain Higgins, um, what does your parish look like without a police presence? Well, every, every every American community would certainly see an incredible increase in in crime, and and it, it would be very fast, <laughs> a very fast rejection. It, it'd be like someone saying, "Well, you know, I we've decided not to eat." It, <laughs> Let's see how that how that uh, de determined effort is going in a couple of days. It would very quickly get, the street would would know criminals would know criminals are not stupid man they 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 mm -hmm. they're very calculated in their endeavors and as soon as any community abolishes or decreases funding in a, in a police department certainly in patrol uh, you can see a, a dramatic increase in crime. And then the same people that were yelling, you know, abolish the police, they'll be begging for the police. So, you know, my my suggestion to them is that, and leave the, re the, le the rest of us alone. And if you don't want to interact with the police, by all means, stop calling us. Just stop calling 911. Just leave leave us alone. Handle your own business. And, it, and just stop calling us to get your kid out of bed because he won't go to school or to settle for the, for the 30th or 40th time that year, some kind of domestic dispute within your own household. Handle your own business. Stop calling 911 if you don't like the police. Amen. Yeah, very good, very good. Well, uh, Tim, you, you did a lot of work with the uh, Joint Counterterrorism Task Force, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, worked a lot in counterterrorism. Right. right. If, if the police are abolished, what does that mean the next time that there's a terror event in in the United States? What does that mean the next time there's a mass shooting? Are we going to send a bunch of social workers out there to deal with that? And, and you know what? We're we're just projecting such weakness right now to the folks that really are intent on destroying our society. Uh, and let me back up just to if this is not the defund the police thing's not new. Look at Cleveland. I think it was Pastor Daryl Scott yesterday testified up on the Hill, and he ran down exactly what happens when you begin to defund the police. And then Baltimore, look at Baltimore. And here's the reality. The very people who are hurting the most, who need the police, will be the most affected. That's right. And it's sad that we have to uh, even put that on the table as an option. If any, Now, I, I believe, you know, I trained law enforcement my last 10 years. I'm a big training guy, and certainly there's some training that needs to occur. But at the same time, the police are the only thing between order and chaos. We know that. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness depend on someone being safe to exercise those rights. And yeah. so I think <clears throat> to get to your question, um, I, I know for a fact that organizations that hate us are actively looking how to fuel this fire. And I think it does communicate. When you begin to defang the police, you're stopping those that are going to hopefully get there quickly and mitigate it. And it's, it's not a good thing. And, and I, it, it just goes to show you that in chaos, everything becomes illogical. Because yeah. anybody having a, a good, healthy conversation would be able to go, really? Do you not want police in your neighborhood? And all the, all the folks I know would be like, heck no, we want them. 
we need to have them there. So this is a this is a difficult situation to find ourselves. In. It is. I find it interesting with the training that you do, how it has you've told me it has changed in the last five years to being a lot less of uh, shoot, no shoot, going to the range. When do you pull your gun and, you know, uh, marksmanship and all that and a lot more of de-escalation training uh, tactics and, and right. you know, things like that. So this is something the police have already been very intentional right. about. They've been very intentional yeah. about training their officers to de-escalate. But, you know, when you've got a guy uh, fighting you intent on killing you and you know, in the back of your head that 40 or 50 cops have been killed in the last couple of months in the United States. Um, right. I, how can we continue to armchair quarterback our cops when they're in a situation like that? Can't. I would, uh, to, to, to speak to the congressman's point of stop calling the police. How about stop breaking the law? You don't want to, you don't want to deal with the cop. Show me one of these instances in the last five years where one of these guys was not actually attacking the police officer or committing a felony of some sort when he was shot by the by the cops last year uh, in 2018 i guess uh there were what 12 uh officer involved shootings in the united states that involved a white officer and a black man and 10 of them the black man was attacking the cop the other two the cops were uh were prosecuted so where is the problem here? That, that's the thing that's so frustrating about this. Okay, folks, we've got, we're, we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming on with us today on the Hot Zone. It's been very instructive and meaningful, and I know our, our viewers will love it. Uh, I, I'm Chuck Holton, and we'll be back with more Hot Zone uh, in a couple of days. Take care. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2019.